Here we are at the WKTV studio in Wyoming, Michigan, and I have the beautiful Laura Armenta, who is an adjunct professor at Grand Valley State University and teaches yoga and dance. And uh, well, Laura, can you tell me a little bit about, about yourself? Um, well, I was born and raised in Mexico City, and um, you can tell by my little accent I have. Um, I have been a dancer for 30 years, which is a long time for a dancer's life. Um, let's see what else. Um, I dance a lot of different styles of uh, dance forms. So my specialty per se is uh, contemporary dance. And within that, I'm trained in different techniques, such as Graham, Horton, uh, improvisation. But I also studied um, dance anthropology, which is oh, really? really cool. So I learned different dances from around the world. And I do Middle Eastern dance, which is what people know uh, uh, as belly dancing. Right. And Indian dance, how I do my little hand stuff in Bollywood. Oh, I, I've um, seen some of your Bollywood videos. Very cool. West African dance. Um, uh, Afro-Caribbean stuff. So anything that is movement, basically, I love doing it. Um, I also got into yoga about, I don't know, 20 something years ago. And within the discipline of movement, I integrate uh, elements from yoga into my uh, dance movement. It's kind of like uh, the source of dance techniques come from way back into the ancient tradition of yoga. Very cool. So I mix and match. I have, I've done also lots of martial arts, um, capoeira, some Aikido, um, Thai boxing, so I can punch. <laughs> <laughs> Very so, cool. So yeah, that's me. So what uh, inspired you to become a dancer 30 plus years ago? Um, you know, I don't know if it was a particular specific thing. Um, Mainly, I, I do know, I remember being a very shy kid, mm -hmm. and the whole verbal communication was not my thing at all. So I used to be an athlete and did lots of track running uh, hurdles and stuff. And so movement has been my thing always. Mm -hmm. It's just that when I got into dance, and uh, I think I, it was through a school that I went to see a performance. Mm -hmm. um, but I realized that it was, it, was, it was a way to communicate and get my emotions out through movement. So it was not as running into a straight line anymore. It was meaningful in a, in a way to express. I gotta tell you though, that I have never been like a ballerina. I started dancing old, considered to like the dancer's life. And ballet was never something that moved me. Mm -hmm. I have been very, um, into driven powers for women. And I think the themes for ballet are the princes and Prince Charming mm -hmm. and it's all good. So emotionally speaking, contemporary dance, I think is very powerful and right. uh, passionate. And that's what moved me into all this. So I'm like hardcore. <laughs> very cool. Yep. So uh, tell me a bit about what you do now. The studio you've got here in Grand Rapids? Yeah, we just turned 17 years in Grand Rapids. So it's, uh, it's an accomplishment for someone that studied dance and the whole business side of business is tricky, but so. Yeah, that's kind of two different sides mm -hmm. of uh, the coin, actually People being a business person. People think that dancers are like, oh, happy life. And <laughs> I do love what I do, mm -hmm. but uh, it is a business. You have to, you know, take care of a lot of things and being an entrepreneur requires a lot of discipline and commitment and uh, focused. So uh, yeah, so the studio is called Our Mentality Movement Art Center. And that is like a way to integrate movement in general. So we do body conditioning, uh, hooping, coming mm -hmm. up some capoeira as well, all the dance forms that I teach. So it's a, it's a space that is used for recreational classes as well as professional. And we use it as performing venue as well. And in addition to that, I have my dance company that um, I don't remember exactly how many years, but I am actually this year celebrating my official 30 years as a performer. So this has been like a good milestone for a lot of events in my life. And so I combined what I do with the studio as well as teaching in different 
location. So yeah, uh, Grand Valley is my my newest thing. So I do lots of dancing at Grand Valley as an adjunct professor. But um, yeah, mainly the stuff is my my dance company and the stuff that I choreographed. You know, I have makes to ask. Me happy. You, you've mentioned it twice. What is capoeira? Capoeira is a Brazilian martial arts. Okay. Um, do you want me to elaborate more? Oh, on just it? a little bit. Uh, well, it's a, it's a tradition that came about from slavery. Mm -hmm. And it's a little mixture between like a dance and martial arts. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of rocking motion that um, it could be taken as a dance festivity, but it's an interaction of two people kind of in an acrobatic play and requires a lot of upper body strength and core. So there's a lot of flipping. Some I can't do it anymore uh, <laughs> because I had two knee surgeries. Good, because I don't want to get flipped. But um, it is a beautiful thing because a lot of the participants and uh, practitioners of capoeira have to also play instruments and they rotate in, in almost like a celebration. Okay. So it's very cool. And yeah, you should check it out. We're going to have some classes coming up in January. And it's open for everybody, men and women. I'm, I, I may be wrong, so correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm sensing a certain theme in some of the things, uh, be, if I'm reading between the lines right, capoeira, the, it was of the slaves, mm -hmm. you talked about the uh, empowerment of dance. Yes. Uh, is, is that something that you uh, like working with specifically, taking people who are, um, need to be empowered and teaching them their personal empowerment through mm, dance? Very clever. <laughs> I would say so, yes. I, um, again, it's not something that I think came about by like one day waking up and saying, oh, this is what I'm going to do. But it has been, uh, it has been an evolution on a process on my personal struggle to accomplish things um, that as I interact with my students, uh, I realize that being able to be free into movement, it requires a lot of freedom of the mind and for you to be open to experience something new, it has to come from here first and overcome an emotional struggle of some sort to let your body experience something new. Um, and when it comes to that, I, I think I'm good at identifying when people need that extra little push and whether it's empowering women to women or minorities, um, I use my choreography to express uh, social justice themes or autobiographic stuff that is kind of like the struggle that not always ends up in a happy ending, <laughs> but um, it's, it's the process of what it takes to accomplish things through movement. So when I teach, I like to allow people to be happy and encourage them to be brave, just let loose. And it's not with the goal of everybody eventually will become professional, it's just um, allowing the process of using the space and um, just kind of like a, a language. Mm -hmm. Same like people could speak French or German. Um, the language of movement, I think, is, is healing and empowering in many levels. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah. So um, 17 years in the studio, 30 years in dancing. Where do you want to go with this? Is there anything that you've got in mind that you uh, overall grand scheme where you want to go or uh... I think so um, again nothing is concrete but I have been working on um, moving into choreographing as a guest choreographer to companies to whoever would bring me um, I am looking at going back to interact more professionally in Mexico because since I left my country, I really haven't done much professionally speaking back there. Mm -hmm. So I would like to teach there, perform as well. And as far as performing, um, my lifespan as a performer is kind of closing a little, so I need to hurry up. I do envision to um, present my choreography outside of Michigan for sure. And so those are kind of like my immediate goals mm -hmm. for now. Very cool. Mm -hmm. So you'd like to do some, uh, bring back to your own country some of what you've uh, that picked up over the last yes. 30 years here. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah. Now, um, before we go to our uh, um, uh, 
the next section, I'd like to get you to teach you a little bit of dance. Okay. But could you tell me something interesting about yourself, a little weird and wonderful that maybe folks wouldn't know? Wonderful. Um, you are wonderful, so. Let's see. I already, I'm weird, I already you're told you about this ballet thing that okay. I'm not a ballerina. And my students shouldn't listen to that, but because I do teach ballet, but it doesn't move me. Um, okay, <laughs> I think acting. Mm -hmm. Acting is something that kind of people assume that because I am on stage, mm -hmm. I should be good at. <laughs> And I have the capacity to remember movement, like that is not tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But I cannot remember lines. And I cannot definitely express through, you know, acting. I, I really have great respect for actors because that's something that I have tried many times. And either I start cracking up laughing or I am a complete disaster. So I think that's something that no one knew that mm -hmm. now they do. Cause yeah, really, I, I memorize movements like years go by and it's still here. But if you give me a script, I just panic. I can't retain it. I don't know uh. why. So that's my thing. Thank you. And how about, uh, would you teach me a little bit of a dance? Yeah, absolutely. Like what kind? Because I can teach you Bollywood. I can teach you ballet dancing. I can teach you dramatic stuff. You are very confident in your teaching abilities. I'm really good at what I do. Do you really think you could teach me anything? Well, are you a good student? <laughs> Let's find out. Okay. Fade to black. Here we are at Gen Con in 2015, and I have Brant Wilson and Michael Ritchie of Rather Dashing Games. And what's this game? Tell me about it. This is Graveyards, Ghosts, and Haunted Houses. Okay. This is the second game in our Drawn and Quartered series of tile laying games. What you're doing is you're playing as one of these four ghosts. And they each have their own epitaph. We have the dead bride, of course. We have the oh. kid, kid that got hit by a bus, the old guy that fell down, and the hobo who drank his liver. I so, think I hit by a train. I <laughs> by a train. You're simply taking turns laying down these tiles and drawing tiles and trying to build the highest scoring connected section of your faction. So let's say you're blue. You know, you may have... The game may look something like this okay. so far. Now you can see how the blue is connected, mm -hmm. white is connected, green is doing all right, orange is doing horrible. If you're playing like this, at the end of the game, this blue ghost wouldn't matter at the end. It's just okay. the highest scoring connected section. Right. You get a point for each ghost. Okay. There are different icons that show up on the tiles. Okay. This one, if you play this tile, you can place a token onto the tile. The tokens have different things. This one. Because you're playing a ghost, these are the meddling kids, and they're very, very terrified. So if they are in <laughs> your area, Those meddling kids. you right. get three more points. If a paranormal investigator, which may or may not be me, is in your place, you get minus three points. He has no beard. Can't be you. <laughs> that, was, that was really good looking. Uh, oh wow! <laughs> you can't possibly be me. I was gonna say must. Be. Okay. So if the paranormal investigator is in your group at the end of the game, he will take away three points because you're a ghost. You don't want him there. Now this one's interesting. This is a gravestone. I'm going to move these. Okay. And if I place the gravestone, it essentially buries that ghost. Let's say, uh, let me let me change the setup here. Buries that ghost, and now these two are separate. Oh. Yeah. So it's a blocking action. Yep. Exactly. Two sets of three. Now once a, t a tile has a token on it, it is locked. It cannot be moved or manipulated. Okay. Because these other icons allow you to move the tile. Okay. Okay. So if I play this one, I can rotate any other tile in play, but I can't rotate this one because it has an icon. Oh, okay. I mean, a token on it. Okay? Very cool. But it gives me the option to manipulate the token as well. Oh, really? So I can rotate a tile or move a token. This one allows me to swap any two tiles and rotate them. So if I was white, that might help me a little bit. Or it allows me to swap two tokens. So I went from bad to good. This one allows me to take a tile off the table into my hand and replace it with one from my hand. Or cool. take a token off the table and replace it with one from my stack. So play continues around like that until the tiles are, are done. And then uh, you, you tally up. Now we also have these things, which are haunted houses. Haunted houses. Cool. So the haunted house, you want to explain that? Sure. First? So the haunted house uh, lays on top of these, much like the, uh, to uh, the uh, to tokens do. So it can span one tile, 
tiles. It can span two tiles, or it can even span four tiles. Very cool. Now you want no. your ghost to be peeking out of these windows. All four windows is preferable because each time it, it gives you an, a bonus. So instead of one point, that ghost is now worth two points. So if it were right there, that is now eight points instead of four. Mm -hmm. The disadvantage to that is, is all of these tiles can still be moved. Right. So, so when you put down... Let's adjust oh, it so it makes it... house stays there, but the tile can move under it? No, it can't no. move. Oh. So by placing this down, I have locked down four ah, tiles instead yes, of one, yes. which can be very tactically sound. And right. the only one who can move that haunted house is the owner of that haunted house. So I can lock those tiles for as long as I want. But I could sacrifice my turn and move this if I wanted to. If, you're, if it was strategically valuable to just have an original part of the board. Okay. So it's kind of very simple to learn. But tactfully, tactically, it's very intense. Like all of our. Well, after much debate, Laura has agreed to teach me a little bit of salsa. Laura, what can you do with me? Well, uh, we'll try. All right, so ready? We're going to um, take We're a little step to the right. Step, step to the right. And down. Just like a little line dancing, just okay. alternate. Step, one of each. One, two, 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 no, tiny. One, tiny, there you go. You can smile now, there you go. So now we're gonna do a little chicken wing action and let the shoulder go. We're going backwards, back. There you go. I might fall over. So keep that going, smiling, breathe. Now we do again, <laughs> side, side, there you go. Yay. Uh, yeah? Do I look like one of those guys in the bar? No, no. All right, you can do just hands. Yeah, sorry. All right, so a little hip, hip action. How's that? Yay. Uh, oh. All right, so we're going to do a little marching. Just groove it. Wah, wah. Okay. Grooving. Grooving. Now we're going to take it back. Back. One. Back. Keep the march going. One of each. Oops. Back together. Back together. Yay. There you go. Back together. Oops. This is like you're punching, almost like if you're boxing. Okay. Like but instead rocking. of making a fist, drop your hand. It is forward. Okay. And it goes. Oh, yeah, I forgot Stand I was back. moving the, the shoulders. No T Rex. <laughs> Just swing the chicken wing. <laughs> a, a velociraptor? Maybe. Oh, there you go. But like a baby one. Okay. So you can do the little claw business and rock it. And rock it. Backwards. Backwards. There you go. There you go. Yes. <laughs> That's it. Alrighty then. Wah -wah. I think I'll watch it. Oh, wah wah. Wah wah is good. Wah wah. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Alrighty then. So, salsa so is kind of line dancing. No, no, no. Salsa is a social dance that is more like a dancing with a partner. Okay. But you could just groove it. It's a Cuban dance. And it's just for fun, social, nothing fancy. Lots of hips. <laughs> Not when I'm doing it. You can do that chicken wing. But instead of double chicken wing, huh? one by one. Okay, so you kind of catch the wave. But you're going to swing your hips. Swing your hips. If you're going to get a little oomph, you whip it. There you go. Whip it good. <laughs> <laughs> good? Um, or just tap in place. Okay. There you go. And take it down. I, I don't think anybody who knows salsa and sees me doing it would well, have any don't, idea. Then that don't move your feet and just do this with a phase. That's it. Give me the, um, what's the name? Andy Garcia face. The Andy Garcia face? Yeah. There you go. That's it. <laughs> then the babes come and dance. The what? The babes, the ladies. The babes? Yeah. All right. Yeah. The Ready babes for more? come running the other direction. You want to do more? Sure. OK. We get fancy. So we do one foot <laughs> forward, one foot back. OK. Front, back. One, oh, one front, forward, other foot one back. One back. Yep. One foot front, forward. Back. back. You can smile again. Breathe. Front, yeah, chicken wing. 
like I'm trying to get my back to scratch. <laughs> there you go, that's perfect. <laughs> All right, so just tiny. We do side, touch, side. This time your shoulders go up and down. Up, down, up, down. This is like if you have a little window and you go peekaboo on the side. <laughs> I look like a gimp. <laughs> uh, this is actually kind of if you're cleaning windows, uh -huh. almost. Wax so on, wax there off. You go. Like that, then you go side, side. Groove it. Peekaboo on the side. Smile. Always stay charming. Yay. Woohoo. Now, same thing, but bigger, lower. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, I'm forgetting to move. That's turning into something else. <laughs> 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 I don't know what I was turning stay, into, stay, but... Stay uh, up here, stay up here. Okay. Right there. Down. There you go. All right, so we do the front, front, back, back. Front, front, back, back. Chicken wing. Smiling. Groove it. A little like if you're saying no. Side to side. Front, front, back, back. Front, front. <laughs> You're, you're going to you, go home and say, I met the, per the only person I ever knew who I couldn't teach to dance. <laughs> no, you can. You get the thing going. Excellent. Ah, more? I think I've probably learned about as much as I can, but uh, <laughs> do you want to try some? one more move? One more. Well, we have like five now. Let's recap. How about that? Okay. So we do the going back. Going Both back. feet go back one by one. Back one. There you go. Happy hands. Shoulder. So that's one. To the side. peek a -boo. Cleaning the window. <laughs> Open one. <laughs> so that's two. <laughs> okay. And then we do front, front, back, back, front, front, back, back. There you go. Tiny. <laughs> oh. Hips. Three. Jeez. And then <laughs> I <should> shake not. <laughs> it. <laughs> Gotta shake your shoulders. Oh. Not the hands. <laughs> wah, wah. <laughs> and then the Andy Garcia. There you go. So that's what, like four or five? You got it? Sure. One, one front, <laughs> one back. I am sure the Fred McMurray Studio of Dance will be calling me. <laughs> you never know. Uh, What's the name? Uh, whatever. Dancing with something. Dancing with the stars? Yes. <laughs> I don't. Are you a star? <laughs> yeah, we need somebody as a bad example. All right, side to side. One right, one left. Yay. And... I'm sweating. One turn. What? There you go. No, slow, slow, slow. Feel it. You. Enjoy it. Here. I got a lot here. And there you go. Go around. Good? <laughs> Wonderful. Yay. <laughs> I get to watch you, and I sympathize with you. <laughs> all right. It's all good. Beautiful. Thanks. Today in New Orleans at Wizard World, I was chatting with the bug chef and he uh, gave me a sample of his wares. These are grubs that, uh, beetle grubs. They call them super, super bugs, I think. In a nice mix of Chex Mix. Hmm. They have a kind of a nutty flavor. When I was a kid, my mother used to uh, read Yul Gibbons books and cook all sorts of weird things. She never cooked uh, beetles. And this is a chocolate-coated grasshopper of sorts. She said it comes from Mexico. Really, they are rather tasty. They have a nice crunch. 
That piece needed more uh, chocolate. And here in New Orleans, they love to eat their gumbo. And this is a grasshopper from Grasshopper Gumbo. Delicious. A little bit of a funky twang to it. Anyhow, David George Gordon, Eat a Bug Book. Check it out. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, I tell you what, tell me. I need to know uh, your Facebook web page. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, my uh, studio's website is armentality.com. My dance company is my name, lauraarmenta.com. And we are on Facebook for both. So Facebook, Armentality, and Facebook, Laura Armenta Dance Company. Awesome. Yep. So, uh, those of you who've been watching, you know this woman has a lot of patience. So, <laughs> thank you very much, Laura. Thank you. So, from WKTV Studios, this has been Weird Reuse News Show. Thank right. you very much. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste. Excellent.